Hello, friends. Welcome to the Show to Be Named Later podcast. I'm your host, Johnny Voss, and uh, I'm alongside, well, introducing the new manager of the United States men's national soccer team, Noah Storzinger. How you doing, buddy? Good, good. Uh, ready to uh, get the gold here um, and a little bit of redeem from uh, the shit performance that was... Uh, uh, God, who did we even play? It, it was it was pretty bad, and I didn't I didn't think that you would have. Any, although I did, I almost thought about driving down to to Arrowhead to see their their last uh, match that they had. I'm glad I didn't. Um, but I didn't even think we'd get this far in soccer. So uh, I didn't I didn't. But I it's funny because we are going to talk soccer at the very end of the end of the program. Um, but don't worry, there's not going to be a, a test or anything like that. And you don't have to have any. Um, knowledge it's got something to do completely almost against Tiger. Anyways, all right. Well, well what do you I, want to talk about? How about oh go ahead? Well, I just want to we're on the, the topic of, of Olympic sports or or you know whatever, but um did I see that is football in the the summer Olympics flag this year? Yep, and, and did football. I see that the US team lost American football to Japan in flag football? Like full American tackle football. It, what what planet was this on? I, I, I'm not apparently Earth because I I had seen a graphic that we had lost to Japan in American football. Well, but that okay. So the Olympics hadn't started yet. That I don't think full tackle football is is an Olympic sport. Uh, I believe it is just flag football. Um, but I think I I did see a blur. I didn't I didn't look into it because I don't know. You know who's playing? Ben Schmidt from UW River Falls. I, I you know what I mean. Like it, it, I, so, I, 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 go ahead. Well, yeah. So it's the it was the. Oh wait, this was women's, women's American football. Yeah, I know. A chair, I, I mean, I know someone who plays on the uh, the Minnesota Vixen. Actually, they were they were in the title game last year. Uh, she caught a touchdown in that game. The game was televised on ESPN. The Vixen been around for a long time now, and they're an actual pro sport. They lost like all Minnesota teams in the championship, but uh, but yeah, my my friend Jackie is a stud ed on that team for sure. The IFAF. They yeah. have games over at uh, in Edina, I believe. Okay. I, I bet you they're there. I bet you I got to go look now because I, I haven't talked to to Jackie in quite a while, but uh, I bet you their season's in full swing that they're, they're almost getting close to, to playoff time. I might have to go check that out. Oh, right. Yeah. I mean, well now I'm mistaken. Cause I guess I, in my head, I had thought that a men's American football team lost American football to. No, that one. Happened. So no, that one, happened. It, that one happened. No. No. And I'm guessing that the Japanese women's team is tougher than the men's team in Japan <laughs> for sure. Um, but, but all right, all right. Very, very quickly though, because I know a lot of my friends know the answer to this, but um, I believe there's three on three volleyball uh, is one of the, uh, the events in the Olympics this year. And do you know who is on the men's, the, the, the Americans uh, men's three on three volleyball team? Is it a uh, former Timberwolves player, Chase Budinger? It is Chase Budinger. Very good. Very good. So, uh, you know, that, that gives me hope because I know like my NBA career did not turn out the way I wanted. And uh, uh, your mom taught me the art of setting. So I would be a great setter on an Olympic uh, volleyball. That's always an option, you know? So anyway, all right. Uh, but quickly, are you excited at all about the Olympics? Yeah. Uh, Summer Olympics, I get a lot more excited than than winter. My wife gets yeah. very very excited about the Olympics, especially the the gymnastics. Um, yeah. I'm really excited. I think this this men's basketball team, I mean, should is a shoe in for a gold. Um, I would hope no. so. What about France, man? I would hope so though. But it, it, France France looks tough. But um, no, I'm excited to see it. I think it's a, a really cool opportunity, especially for uh, for our boy Anthony Edwards. So yep, I agree and. Uh, Apparently some people were giving him a hard time because he chose uh, his number for the Olympic uh, team. And supposedly there were some folks that were upset because he was sending a message. Do you know what number he chose? 
or don't, is it eight? Number or, one, or, dude. Number one. Okay. It's basically telling everybody that I am the number one guy on this team. He, and there are some folks that. that I agree. I agree he is. Absolutely he, hands he, down. He literally had said, you know, I am the number one option this team's built around me, and I fucking love that. And yep. and who just – I believe he was the leading scorer against uh, Canada last night. So, um, All right. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, the uh, the Olympics are just not – I mean, breakdancing is an event, I believe, for crying out loud. It's, it's not the same um, as it was uh, even, to me, 20 years ago, the Olympics isn't. But um, I, you know – during the summer I'm unemployed. So, uh, I love, you know, New Zealand versus Uruguay and in handball at three in the morning, it's live sports going on, you know, all day and all night. So for that, I, I will, and there are the events, you know, I, the track and field is great. Um, you know, my, my mom used to love gymnastics, uh, so much, uh, Oh, and there is a there is a a tweet that was made that's been since taken down or whatever. But I think we're going to cover that later on, uh, or we're going to be here all day. So, uh, all right, let's move on. Uh, how about those twins? Huh, dude? Well, first of all, it, you know, I just just because the news just broke about three minutes ago, I want you to you know another twin has been named to the All Star game, um, right. and and I want you to guess who. Uh, Griffin Jacks. No, but he should be an all star. Right. Absolutely. Okay. I mean, I, I, this was on my way down the list of, of things I wanted to talk about today was, was all star. Like I wanted to get what your idea of who should be on the all star team before they chose and then who got slight or whatever, but no, um, it, it can't, it can't be Miranda and it can't be, it can't be Royce. Nope. So I'll tell you this. He was, and I told you last year and I, I got to give myself some credit because I said, Hey, last year, I think he was one of the ill forgotten potential MVPs of the team last Will year. Castro? Willie Castro is an all Yeah. Okay. All right. I'll, hey man. Good for him. Good yeah. for him. Uh, he's, he's having a great year and, and I'll tell you, uh, well, let, let's go. Who who did you think? Because I, I had this conversation probably, I don't know, a week and a half ago, maybe two weeks ago um, with a good friend who I watch a lot of baseball with. And I was like, who, who do you, who do you go with? Right. At, at that point, it had to have been like two weeks ago. And at that point I was like, you know, you don't have, in my opinion, you didn't have a lights out guy who wasn't a pitcher, right? This year you don't have, really a pitcher. I mean, I said, Joe Ryan, I said, I, I don't know. any. his, his response was, well, no, it's not a Dave Engel year because every team gets one representative. You know what I mean? And I was like, well, then you tell me because Royce can't make it been hurt all year. All right. And then I didn't put Carlos in that, I guess like two weeks ago, even though he's having a great, I was like, compared to other American league Players, I don't know if Correa deserves to go. I think he's well deserved of it. Uh, yeah, but I, mean, I Joe Ryan was the only one that I could come up with. Joe for sure. Um, but uh, to me, I mean, I don't, I don't think a starter, the starters besides Joe Ryan have not been anything particularly special besides maybe Simeon's Simeon Woods Richardson, but um, Griffin Jacks is having a very good year. Josh Stalmont has not given up a run yet in over 20 right. innings, um, who's been a, a really good surprise. Um, Duran's had some issue with uh, some velocity and stuff, but he's still almost a sub two ERA or sub three ERA guy right now. So not an all-star, but still a good pitcher. But um, no, Griffin Jacks, I think was absolutely deserving, especially when I saw Clay Holmes from uh, New York made it. And, and he, he's been, the ERA looks solid, but with him, the, the advanced, metrics are, are not very good and he's kind of been rocky. So confused why he made it. Um, although he's a Yankee, so it makes sense. Right. But, um, no, I, I'm very happy. I think Carlos Correa absolutely deserved to be a, a an all-star, a lot of Dude, good shortstops this year. You know, I mean, you always look at triple C and, and, and his defense is always, 
incredible where you go. You, you wish somebody could make it just because of uh, their defensive prowess, but he is hitting the ball, man. And yeah. like, so I, I agree that, you know, and I, I, I feel bad because I think I overlooked Carlos Correa initially. Um, but I, I believe Griffin Jacks should, should maybe be there um, as well. Uh, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's, it's interesting. This team is, is playing really, really good baseball right now. And what it was six straight series wins. And right. It, we are the best team in baseball, uh, best record in baseball so far in the past 40 some, 50 some games recently or whatever. I can't remember what the stat was, but um, number one offense in, in the league right now. Um, we, we, we've just been, been killing teams offensively, which has been so different uh, from the past year or, or, or two uh, when we talk about how frustrating the offense was so it's really cool to see that but yeah this team's playing at a different level right now it's cool and and i i think that it is true that they started hitting the ball once royce got back you know and and i i like the fact that they're continuing to they're continuing to hit the ball uh with him down again um we'll talk about royce a little bit down the road, but you know, um, one thing that stuck out because we haven't talked twins baseball for, for quite a while. Um, it's been a, a minute since I've been able to watch them. The only time I get to watch this team is when my good friend perm takes me, uh, as his guest, uh, uh, to the games. Um, now that has changed and we'll, we'll get into that in a second, but you know, um, I guess my point with the twins as, as I watch this team, um, uh, I was hanging with a buddy over, um, the 4th of July and happy birthday, America. We salute you. Uh, and, and I would say he's a, he's a casual watcher of the twins. Like if they were on, if they had six games out of seven, seven days, he might watch three, maybe four, but not the way that we do, you know, and, and I was hanging with them and, and we were talking about the twins and, and I was a little down and there's still a couple things that, that kind of, I don't know. They, they just stick in my craw a little bit, you know? And, and so we started talking and he's like, you know what, dude, I'll tell you, man, like the poll ads have really alienated this group of, you know, like uh, this fan base dude with the fact that they started out not spending money. And then, you know, the whole TV deal, you know, and I, as I thought about that, it was interesting that he brought it up because we had brought it up on this show before. Um, you know, I think I had said that, the poll ads are, are they, they went underneath and did not put a better team on the field and that they're putting all their eggs in a young basket and they better be right on it. And now it feels like, yeah. And they got it. And, I, and not because they know so much about baseball, but right now, man, they are getting a lot out of a lot of guys that you didn't think that going in, into the season. Right. Yeah. I mean, you think about, I, I think about a guy I just mentioned, Josh Stalman, giving you 20 scoreless innings out of the pen. Um, you've got Trevor Larnick, who who was basically written off at one point and and is now just been a, a, a stud at the top of the lineup. Um, getting a lot from Willie Castro, getting uh, a lot from Austin Martin, which has been cool. Simeon was rich. At, so yeah, they've been they've been right. I think to to your buddy's credit, though, like yeah, they have alienated the fan base a little bit in the sense like I, 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 I still stand on that. I still agree with them on that, but I, I still, I, I think that they got lucky on what, I mean, think about this for a second. The twins on July 11th, 2023 were 45 and 46, a half game out of first place. We are 13 games over 500 and still only five games out. And, you know, me and my buddy Connor always tell you, you if you just win the series, and I was like, no, nah, I don't think that's going to do it this year. But, no, if you do continue to just win the series, you're going to make the playoffs, and you might catch Cleveland. I Again, and we talked about this last time, I still think we catch Cleveland. I, I yeah. really do. I just – that I don't know if you saw the, the graphic that came out a couple mm, – week ago maybe – um, and it showed the the luck meter for every franchise. Cleveland was by far the luckiest franchise. They, they do a bunch of 
stats and everything, put it all together and it, it calculates your luck factor. Um, the Cleveland, it was the luckiest team in all of MLB. Uh, the twins, I think were middle of the pack. They ended up being a, a net unlucky team. Um, so it just means guardians are winning lots of, of lucky games, whether it be a team pulls an error uh, in the last second of a game, or, you know, they're, they're playing against rookie pitchers at left and right. They're just, I'll give it them. Their bullpen is phenomenal. It is pitching right. lights out right now, but everything else it, it is really not sexy. And that, and well, that's what's it's funny. You say that because I, I did watch a little bit of uh they, they should have lost to Detroit the other night. It, it was like 10 to nine or something, an extra inning, a great game. Um, by the way, they are down six to one right now to Detroit. Detroit's played them very, very well. That would mean that at the time of us talking about this, the twins would be under five games out, uh, which is great. But, you know, back to my other buddy's point, you know, and he's like, you know, and with that and like, not and like, but now no one can watch them, dude. And, and I agree. And I, I still don't understand like that. There was the big court ruling, right. Um, in Houston that, that said that, that Bally's has to pay back. And when I read, read that initially, I didn't understand. It was like, well, then that means that you can actually stream them through other deals. It still means you got to pay fucking money to watch them when you've already got cable. You know what I mean? Like Bally, so what? Bally's is rewarded. And like, even if Major League Baseball takes over, it means that your games aren't going to get blacked out if you go through another streaming service, but you still got to go through another streaming service. And that, I, I don't get that shit at all. Well, it, it quite honestly, it it's, to me, it's still on, half of it's on Bally's, but I, I'm i saying majority's on the Twins for, for they had the opportunity to, find other options last year and they took the paycheck and took another year with Bally's saved a bunch of money on the payroll. I've heard that they don't want to throw a bunch of money in at the trade deadline this year. So I, I don't know at what point, I mean, they're, they're behind in attendance again this year. So at yep. what point is it like, you know, Joe, po yeah. Joe Polad took on the reins and at some point, like, how is this guy not, Right, and they don't care because they got a second place team right now. And, and like to my buddy's point, he was like, "You know, dude, like I don't know, dude, if like they come back in a month or you know, even like in August or whatever, you know, or September, I don't know if I would, I would do it, dude. I don't know if I would, I would be into it, you know, just because I've lost touch. And I, and I wanna, I wanna piggyback on that or back up what he was saying. I mean, think about what the poll ads or the twins have lost with their, their regular fan base that doesn't make it out to the ballpark that they, all they do is watch them. I, you got the re reemergence of Jose Miranda. Now th that guy, I thought he, we, we would never hear of him again last year. Like, honestly, I thought he was done. He would, he would take a job somewhere else or whatever. And you got a guy who he is now, he hit safely in 12 consecutive at bats. That's really hard to do at the major league level, right? Yeah, that's a great I, I, story for all Twins fans. Who go, I want to watch. I have to tune in. It was like, uh, what's his name? Michael Phelps in the Olympics. You got to tune in to watch him race because this is such a meaningful at bat. And and you lost that. You, you lost it. You lost it. I had to listen on the radio like I was in the 30s, like just trying to hear his every at bat. And God, that was yep. annoying. Yep. Um, I, I just thought that that was, that, that was a waste because you would not only maintain, but you would make more fans if you're able to see that. Right. Um, and, and like I said, I mean, um, I talked to another buddy of mine, haven't talked twins baseball in a while and he's so excited about Jose Miranda. Okay. Well then let's bring up another one that the twins missed out because nobody can see this. Your guy, Brooks Lee. And I've got to give you credit and flowers or whatever they call it because you've been high on this guy for two years. And wow, yesterday was the first day he didn't get a hit in the major leagues. In the major leagues. And he's been up six days. Well, he still technically got a hit that day. It was just a different game. But yeah, I mean, it, yeah, right. it, and he hit a monster homer off of his former roommate. One that he won that he turned the whole game around. Yep. Um, no, I, you know, 
honestly, with the web and talking about some of these guys, I think I, I have a future in MLB scouting. Um, that's just me, though. But <laughs> Okay, so not only uh, – I mean, I'll tell you, man, like – up until yesterday, like I say, Brooks Lee got got a hit in every game. I was at his first game uh, against. Uh, why can't I even? I can't even think about who who were playing that night. It was it was a terrible team though because I I knew no one. Anyways, uh, went to Brooks Lee's first first major league game, which I had been to Byron Buxton's first major league game ever down in St. Louis. Okay, and um. One point in the night, there's a guy behind us. Man, he was just flapping, going nonstop, talking, talking. And finally, about the eighth inning, he said to his kid, he heard him. He said, "You're you're gonna someday. You're gonna tell your your grandkids you saw Brooks Lee's first game. You know because we saw his first hit." And that finally, I mean, I wanted to tell him to shut up all night. I turned around. And I was like, "Exactly right, my man." And I'll tell you, we went. That was a uh, July third. Uh, we went, so they had fireworks right after the game. And I looked, I looked down, like the players come out of the field, you know, sometimes with their families and Brooks Lee's got this hottie little girlfriend or whatever that comes out on the field. They're the first ones out. And I'm like, I looked at my buddy and I'm like, how is that for, for being just 23 years old and you just got two hits in your first major league game. And now you're on the field, sitting on the, on the grass infield with your girlfriend watching fireworks. Like that's America, man. No, it's so cool. And Brooks is like, again, someone I've waited for literally since he got drafted. Like I, I, I think I look at MLB draft. It, it's harder because there's so many guys, but Brooks was someone that I had known a little bit about before and was just really wanted us to draft him. And I'm so happy we did, but um, I don't know if you noticed the way he swings the bat and the, 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 the hits that he's had are mostly just, dead center field. I mean, he just, yep. he can spray yep. the ball, but he's just right up the middle, right up the middle, right up. The, it, it's just a clean, like, it's almost like he gives me mo like a better Jorge Polanco vibe a little bit, just, just right. the way he kind of plays. And and I'm excited because you pair him with a healthy Royce Lewis, the Buxton hitting really well, Carlos Correa, Jose Miranda. Matt oh my God. It, yep. Uh, and, and, and that was my point when I, I talked to my buddy who I hadn't talked to in a while and, and he was so excited. He was like, these young guys, I'm like, and I gave you credit. I was like, Noah talked about Brooks for forever, but he's like, think about the guys we got and the kind of guys they are the right kind of attitude, no ego. I just want to make my team better. Um, you're looking at a very positive infield for years to come, I would, I would think. And that's why I say, I think the poll ads got, got kind of lucky there, you know, but, but like I say, it was something that the organization lost out on because twins fans couldn't tune into his first hit. They couldn't tune into his first home run. <clears throat> they, uh, I think my buddy Connor told me about was his dad, the baseball coach. And the whole time he's just sitting there like this or whatever in the interview. And, and I, I mean, Okay, then they missed out on Carlos Correa. Correa been hitting the ball. He was he was going on, what do you have, a 12, 13-game hit streak going as yeah. well? Okay, you missed out on that. Um, you know, so my question is, when Royce Lewis, because they say after All-Star break, hopefully, right? And, yeah. and I salute Royce Lewis for saying, I'm sick of the twins babying me. Did you see that? He was like, put me on the IL. I didn't need to go. You're, you're just, okay. When he comes back, you got to send someone down. Who's it going to be? So You know who I'm thinking? Well, he, here's what you got. You have to make the tough decision right now to, and you can trade these guys if you want and get a bag of balls for them, but you got to either DFA Kyle Farmer or Manuel Margot. It's it's yep. one of the two, and I I don't think I think Margot has done better than I thought he was gonna do. The only problem is like Farmer, you're paying like six mil, right? Like I mean that's a huge. I don't know if they're if, but to me it's Farm Dog. It is. Yeah, and <laughs> well, and you know Margot's making more than than Farmer right now, but 
right now, Farmer is just providing you veteran Nothing. leadership at this point, and and that's it. And that's it. It, it, it's sad because I really like Farmer. He was I do too last year, but Trevor I think like you you just got to bite the bullet. I think because. I understand wanting some depth and, and, and whatnot, and maybe they figure out a fake injury, put them on the IL and, you know, keep them around a little longer just in case. But it, it's been kind of tough to watch him strike out, strike out, strike yep. out, terrible at bat over after terrible at bat. And I thought he would figure it out, but he just, when you start off the year that bad, I, it, it's really hard to come back from that. So, you know, I think he'll get, he'll get cut. He'll get, picked up by another team and probably have a decent end of the year somewhere. Would anybody be interested in trading for him? Because, you know, because that's, that's the other thing we got to talk about. So it depends because farmer has an option for his, his, or he's got one more year of arbitration. I think, Oh, no, never mind. He's, he's a free agent after this year. So, yep. you know, I could see a team like, the Yankees or the Dodgers who just have money on money because I, I just don't think someone's going to trade for a $6 million guy who's hitting a buck 50. Right. Um, but you know, at the same time, would you want them just kind of there for your playoff push? Maybe a couple playoff at bats. I, I don't want Kyle Farmer for any postseason at bats. I don't at this point. I don't No, I'm thinking, I'm thinking for a team like New York or, or, Right. Los Angeles, maybe, but I think he just gets he gets cut. I could see Margot getting traded for something. It it wouldn't right. be much, but he's he's got another year of control next year, but it's ten million dollars. So he, he's not gonna well, be a twin next year. And that's just it because you know, when we were talking about the poll ads being lucky, and I I I believe this, I mean, there were a lot of things that had to happen for this team to emerge the way it did. We talked about Miranda. I never thought Miranda came up by, by one of those coincidences, right? Like where Royce Royce gets hurt. Um, Kirilov sucks. Uh, right. And so there, there really wasn't anything more that you could do it. Kind of the same with Brooks Lee, right? Uh, you, you, you had guys that got hurt or were not performing, but might not have made that trip initially to Minneapolis from St. Paul. And, and so, <clears throat> you know, we always, we always talk about this is the time are, are the twins buyers or sellers. And usually it's always like twins are going to be sellers, you know, because they're in the seller. All right. But, but now you got to think that they, if they're going to make that push, they got to be buyers and where at, at what position do you think that they're going to target? So I've heard a lot of rumblings because like I mentioned before, um, the twins typically like to go after guys that have another year or two of control. Um, it, they don't necessarily like to go after rentals, which I get it, it's a little risky, right. especially with our trade history recently has been iffy. I mean, it, the amount of injured people we have been trading for the past three years has been borderline criminal at this point. Um, so that's why it's, I think, I think right now they're a little worrisome, especially, you know, the Tyler Malley deal. Um, Jorge Lopez was, was horrible. Um, even this Jorge Polanco trade that we did, I mean, Di Scafani's out, Justin Topa hasn't even played. Um, and that was the whole right. deal. So um, but they'll go after someone that's going to help this team this year. And they and better, put us they better because, yeah. Over the end, right? So here's what you need. Um, I mean, you obviously need a starting pitcher that's going to give you some playoff innings. Um, and you can go a rental route, but again, I, I just what I heard was they don't want to commit any more significant money past 2025 or into 2025. So going after a guy who has multiple years of control is great, but then they're extending the payroll you know, years in advance, which they don't want to do. So maybe they yeah, go. I would think they would go with someone like a Kyle farmer whose contracts up at the end of the year, but someone yeah. so head and shoulders above Kyle farmer, you know what I mean? Like they're going to go after maybe I, I would still wouldn't mind a starting pitcher, man, because so we never brought up Dave Festa, but you know, it might be a, a festa for the rest of the year down in St. Paul. Uh, and, and I know that they're still high on him. 
you know, but absolutely. I don't know if he's ready. Well, you know, he's, he's 24. He was struggling a little bit at AAA before they called him up. So I don't know if it was necessarily the right time. I think I would have went with Randy Dobnak, who's pitching really well at AAA, but um, you know, it's, he's still got some time to mature. And he still had some really good stuff. He pumped the strike zone just a little too much, um, but he can throw strikes. That's, that's the thing. So yeah, um, with strikes that were lifted yes. out over the outfield wall, he, like, yeah. he was giving up seven runs both both times. I think that he came out, and yeah. I don't know. Did he pitch tomorrow? No, he's, he's not pitching tomorrow. He's down in AAA. He's down. Okay. Yeah. Well, right. they called him up as the the double header guy, the extra guy. But um, so you know, I I think they need a pitcher. As much as I wanted Chris Paddock to do really well this year, he's a bullpen guy from from here on out. Um, he should not be starting games anymore in my opinion. Um, I, I, I think you need to go after a left-handed reliever because Caleb Thielbar can't really be trusted anymore. He's another guy that I unfortunately think might be done a, after uh, the trade deadline, which, which is, it sucks. Cause I really liked him. I think he's got a future as a coach <laughs> in the twins yeah, uh, organization. Yeah. Um, but I think a left-handed reliever, I think a Tanner Scott from Miami would be fantastic. Um, if I'm going starting pitcher, Cal Quantrill from, from Colorado. Um, okay. He's been roughed up a little bit his last two starts, but still pitching those really are well. All doable. Those are all doable guys too, in my opinion. So the one I was looking at too, which I was really interested in before Houston got really good recently was trading for Verlander it, or uh, not Verlander. Well, Verlander, if they ate the salary. Um, but the other one that I'm looking at now Texas might be sellers, and I'm really curious. Would you trade, uh, you know, a couple prospects for a year of Max Scherzer? Uh, I would probably say Scherzer. Yeah, I, I would. Uh, sure. Uh, it would depend on what we would give up, and if if he was, but but yeah, I because I think. I think that he's better than what we got towards the end. I mean, I would, I, you're right. Woods Richardson has, has pitched well, but who would you rather see him or, or Max Scherzer? Well, right. And, and you know, I look at this rotation and you just think about the playoffs last year, right. And how much you counted on Pablo and, and yeah. Sonny. And right now, I, you know, I think Joe Ryan takes takes the ace right now because Pablo's. Yeah, just but I still don't that. trust. I, he's my favorite pitcher on this team right now, and it has been for a while. But I don't trust him. Not that he's going to give the game up like we're going to get pounded. I see him losing a game in the postseason three to two, and he gave up all three runs. You know what I mean? Like, right. it, it, but then again, you don't know. He might give you one of those games where he goes six innings and gives up one run on, you know, three hits. You know, I, I mean, he's, he's interesting, but he's not hurt anymore. So, but, but, but that's my point is that I think Max Scherzer would give you a lot more than what, what our starting rotation is giving you right now. Yeah. You know, so my, my picks were for starting pitcher is um, I want, I, I Cal Quantrill's an option for me. Um, Texas has some, some options with, with Scherzer. Um, the other one that I, I think I would throw some extra prospects for would be, uh, Nathan Avaldi. I think he would be hmm. fantastic because you get him in 2025 as well. Um, it would, it would cost a, a good chunk there for that. Right. I, and I, and that's it. I, I don't see the twins as making any big splashes, like known guys that you go, Oh, you know what? That guy's going to help this team out. Uh, I do have kind of a long, <laughs> a long deal that kind of, kind of had something to do with what we were talking about, but, but go uh, for it. Okay. So a buddy of mine did me a solid uh, this week and he, he got me Fubo and uh, so, right. Yo, yeah. Oh yeah. I'm ecstatic for sure, man. So <clears throat> the first night I had it was the, the opening game of the White Sox series. Right. And so, I, I tune it. I, I turn it on, but I'm not paying attention because it, it's the pregame yet. And I'm just so excited. I've got my whole night. I'm going to get 
drunk as a as a monkey and watch twins baseball right and so i'm going through you know i'm listening but not really watching uh as it's getting close to first pitch and i'm going through uh papers you know business papers because i'm unemployed and i hear first pitch and it's marnie gellner and denard span doing the game and i'm like holy fuck how long have i been away what what is going on here what what just happened all right and i um i i couldn't believe it i you know i, I was eating my moon pie i was like i guess i'm really in the future Right, I, I I couldn't believe it. I, Marty Gellner and Denard Span and Justin Morneau doing calling the game. Yeah, you know, I I I obviously wasn't able to watch the game, but I I could I watched all the videos of, of every moment. I that's how I watch the games now. Basically, is just these clips. Um, yeah. But I heard her announcing um, again. I didn't get to hear the whole thing, but um, I don't. I, here's the thing: I, she does better in baseball than basketball. Not much. I, I'll, I'll tell you what, you know what? It was like, I was so excited. It was like somebody fixing you up for a first date and you meeting this, this girl, you get to the restaurant and you meet her and she's like, you're like, holy cow. Wow. That's great. And then you find out she's a vegetarian. You know what I mean? Like, that's what it was like going, going into it. And I, and I, I heard it and it was, it, it, it wasn't, it wasn't good, Noah. And, and I'm, first of all, and you're going to, you're going to think that I'm down on Marnie Gellner. I'm not, I've, I've met her many, many times. I, I think she is great. And I know that she has gone through a lot. And so I want to be the first to say, congrats. She's the first woman to ever do play by play for the Minnesota twins. Like if Calvin Griffin was still around, like, I don't know what he'd be more pissed off that there was a black guy doing it, a woman doing it or a fucking Canadian calling the game. Right. So I've got to say, I, I I'm so proud of her and, and congratulations. Um, but it not good, not good. And no, one did not call her Marty on the first night. Like in the second inning, he called her Marty with a T. Um, it, it, it got to a point where I was almost like, I, it, it was almost kind of like, it was hard to watch because you had Denard Span and Justin Morneau talking for multiple minutes. And it kind of like, you know, like the good old boys talking and like the, the girls left out and they were just talking baseball to fill in. And she'd just chime in like, and Lopez gets a strike two call. And then it was like, she'd go on to a promo or whatever it was. And like, I was like, there were times, like I watched the double header yesterday and, it, it was hard to watch listening to this because it was uncomfortable that you had two guys talking baseball, what they knew and, but they weren't taking away from her, but there was ample opportunities for her to inject some kind of life. Like Larnick had this nice diving catch and left and not much. Um, Brooks Lee made this great play at third and, and it, it just won much, you know? And so I'm not being, you know, like, oh, he's just down on women or anything like that. And I know I don't like Doris Burke either. I'm just saying it, 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 it wasn't, it wasn't my, uh, my cup of tea and I, and I'm proud of her and congratulations, but it just was really, really hard to watch for yeah, me. Yeah. I, it, it's same thing when she does basketball. I'm not a huge fan and I, maybe for some people they like it. And I'm, if it's for a couple games, I think it's great, whatever. It's not her calling card. And I, I get that. I think she knows that too. I don't think this is like, I want to be a play by play announcer for the twins or whatever. I think she just does it to have some fun, but uh, you know, cause I think Provis was, I mean, he was gone for the whole week or, or whatnot. So they need you know why he was gone. Is it kind of one of those great, uh, grandy deals or not grandy, uh, the wolves guy, you know what I'm talking oh, about? Grady. Grady. Yeah. I don't think he, so. It was not like Provish was doing, you know, MLB network games or Fox, right? It wasn't. I mean, no, I don't think so. But yeah, I don't, I don't know. Again, it's for a couple games. I didn't, mind it again i didn't have to listen to the whole thing but i will say I, I do like her home run call though i didn't really hear one the other better night. call mama what, what is home run call? it's better call mama oh that's right yeah 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 
That's right. I thought that was just a Carlos Correa thing. She did. Yep. I did. Yep. Okay. Now, because she didn't. And Denard gave her credit for that too. That's right. She didn't do it for every home run though. So I was like, no, come on. If, if that's for the Correa one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That wasn't bad. Uh, I still say, man, if I was, if I was Provich, man, I would be pissed off though, because it's not easy to be the first, your first year in to be the guy to call a team, you know, Certainly not after you follow a guy of 40 years who is on the Mount Rushmore of, you know, twins, you, you think about it. Like, you know, I had Herb Carneal growing up on the radio to me, Bob Kurtz was always uh, the voice of Minnesota sports when I was a kid. Uh, but, you know, Vikings, you got Paul Allen, the, the Timberwolves, you know, for a long time, it was, it was Kevin Harlan, except he went national and then, you know, and, and then our, our buddy, um, uh, Hanneman came in and like, you know, it's hard to replace. So I would be pissed if I was probably because you're following a legend in Dick Bremer and nobody can hear you talk right now. <laughs> oh yeah. I, I, I think he knew that though, coming in, but, um, were you, uh, were you a John Gordon fan? Yes. Yes. I did like John Gordon. Okay. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, now, if you don't if if you don't like Marnie announcing games, I, please look up the Oakland A's announcer because she gets shit on by Twitter <laughs> for her calls. It it'll be a game time three run bomb in the ninth inning. She'll be like, "Oh, and there's a home run to left field." Wait. And you're not talking about the public address announcer because they were the first, wasn't Oakland the first one that, or was that San Francisco that had the first woman public address announcer, but you're talking about, they have a, an, see, I just thought they took homeless people off the streets of Oakland who weren't busy, like stealing fire hydrants, you know, to come because nobody cares about the athletics right now. Oh, right. She, like That's probably why she's doing it, but it, it's, it, it's bad. It's so just look it up. I, you got to take a listen because it's, it's horrible. Okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to do that. And, and, and what do they care? Because like, does anybody care about the, I mean, I know that there is a small group that still wants them to stay in, in Oakland, but man, that has got to be a ghost town. And it always was, you know? Yeah. That I see. That. I know a couple guys from work here are going to the final series in Oakland, which I won't, I won't be able to go to that, but I, that sounds so, so cool. Cause I, as much as the Coliseum's a shithole, I want to, I well, want to where experience your, it. Wear your bulletproof vest. That's all I'll say, man. If you're going to, I mean, tell your buddies to do that. Uh, me and P were talking about like when the, when the twins played Oakland uh, this year, and I was like, you know what? Because we always talk about games we wanted to go to. And I was like, that's one we should have done, man. Like, you know, not that Oakland is the, well, it's, could be a cure for boredom, I guess. But, I, you know, I, uh, that's one I would have, I would have liked to see a game at the Coliseum, you know, before they're done. But whatever. Yeah, and, you know, now I guess I have to see. I mean, I need to see Tropicana. Just, I, I want to experience a dome once, once more, you know, it, it just – if it's so bad, I want to see it. Like, I, I don't, I don't know. That, you know, you, you got to think about, think of that too. Like, I mean, think about how many dome teams there were that, I mean, that I grew up with in Seattle and in Houston and, and just so bad, man. Like it's such bad baseball, but um, not to say Tampa Bay is a bad place for baseball. They should be the Montreal Expos, but I digress. Uh, you had a you had an all star uh, question. Yeah, so I saw this on Twitter, and I'm really curious. You know, if you can use your baseball knowledge, and I dug deep a little bit for this one, um, and I think I'm really, really proud of my answer here. Um, who is the best player in the MLB to never make an all star game? Huh. And you can't say Kirk Gibson because while he never went to one, he still made it. He just refused to go. That's right. Uh, it's hard. I, I, I'm going to go with Walt Weiss of the Oakland Athletics. That name is not familiar to me. Okay. I, I don't know. I gave a guess. So this guy, well, let me see if you can get it. He, he started his career in 92 Played till 2006, all with the 
Angels. Big bopper. I don't know. Because Mo Vaughn started in Boston, didn't he? <laughs> I don't know, man. My guess, my uh, my guy was Tim Salmon. Tim Salmon, great ball player. I I guess I, I was not aware that he had never made an all star all star team. I, I would have thought he did, and let, he let played me, that long. This guy in '97 had 33 bombs, 129 RBIs, hit 296 with a 911 OPS, and never made an all star game. You never that, heard of Tim Salmon? No, I had, and that's why, like, that was why I'm proud of my answer because I was like, "That's a that's a nice pull that I that I had." But you had you got it correct. Well, it's not. It's there's no correct answer. It's just like, but I'm I you know, for a guy that I never watched play, I'm just I thought that yeah. was a good pick. Okay. All right. Well, um, anything else baseball wise? By the way. Not only are the Twins five games out, but uh, the St. Louis Cardinals are making a little push there too. And they're only five and a half games back, which I did not see that coming at all. I guess who's pitching well too. He's pitching like a madman, dude. And he did from the beginning of the year. Okay, but that's uh, St. Louis baseball. Yep. <laughs> all right. Let's switch gears here a little bit. Um, speaking of positives... Uh, your grade. Okay. Now I, I realize we live in an educational system in which letter grades are no longer around. You get a smiley sticker or a, you know, a frown. Oh no. Frown face is too offensive. Uh, and I believe stormy clouds is too offensive too. Um, but we're going to go with the traditional A through F Minnesota Timberwolves. How do you grade it? That's an A plus. They won that draft. I would. I didn't go as far as an A plus, but I would give it an A absolutely. And and like where and like, remember we were worried that Tim Conway was going to be gone. Aren't you so happy that he's still here? Like Dude, yeah. that was pull the rabbit out of your hat or your ass or what? That was one of the most. I guess I I would say that was the one of the most. Uh, pleasing NBA drafts that the Wolves have had in a long time. So, so I'm watching it and you know, I'm not eighth pick comes around and I mean, it's the Spurs again. I'm not expecting anything till really the late first round. I'm like, there's, if we're trading out, it, you know, we're not going to get anything big. We'll be trading future picks, whatever. Um, and you know, I got Twitter pulled up too. Cause uh, Wojnowski, he, tweets everything. I like to see what he's saying and stuff. And all of a sudden, you know, Dillingham gets picked and I'm like, okay, that's, that's a nice pick. And then immediately I say, I see where like Dillingham is going to Minnesota. And I had, yeah. like, I froze for, I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. Eighth pick. We're getting what? And to and see what we gave up a first. Yep. yep. In 2031, I he's a second grader right now. <laughs> I'll tell you, I, I have to be honest, man. I was like, you know, somebody brought that up. I, I, cause I said, I, that was the steal of the draft. It's gotta be right. Dillingham has gotta be the steal of the draft. And my buddy brought up, he's like, oh, are you talking like Ontario Smith of the Vikings shot? No, no, I'm telling you, this is a legit steal of the draft. And then they still get another deal because I don't know if it was because, and I, I got to tell you, man, um, my hat's off to Terrence Shannon Jr. for saying, nope, you're not going to bust my ass on this yep, because yep. I didn't do it, and I'm going to hold by that, and I'm not going to take a plea deal or anything else. Now, you wonder, it shouldn't have kept other teams to be weary of drafting that kid. The kid can score baskets, okay? Um, but to me, I thought that was a that was a that that was kind of like the cherry on top of that draft. It, it absolutely was because, I mean, this guy was in contention, I thought, at one point to be the college basketball player of the year yeah. um, and, and had, you know, was was a top five pick at one point uh, in the draft. And obviously the whole the whole thing happened um, and, and, and he fell. And you know what? The same thing happened to us with Jaden McDaniels where he fell because of his uh, <laughs> his anger issues. But um, yeah. 
for, for, for him to fall to us at, at 20, 27, 28, I can't remember which one, but um, I, you know, just a, just a great, great draft. And, you know, I don't know if you heard too, cause we, we also got a couple more picks during the night. Um, trading away our, our second round pick and then yeah, you know, and, I, and that was the actual the Swede I, I actually wanted him to make our team or whatever but we traded that guy right the sweet oh yeah 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 um In the round yeah but you know and then we we also got a couple you know one or two picks like in, in the uh the Kyle Anderson sign and trade too so you know Tim Conley wheels and deals in in just such a way that I don't think Timberwolves fans are used to um, with, with the old general managers that we had, it, it just stupid decision after stupid decision. And for, for this to happen to us, it, everyone just gets so, oh my gosh, it's actually happening to us where, where, you know, we're not looking at other teams like, God, what, what right. could have, what could have been or, or whatnot. But, you know, for him to deal in, in this cap situation where he could only add minimum contracts, but he could still add rookie contracts and to go out and trade with basically no assets and still get the eighth pick and one of the best scorers off the bench, um, potentially, I, I mean, and to get Terry Shannon is a, is a master class of a draft. I thought. Okay. I thought when, when they, when they made the trade for Dillingham, I, I was like, well, then that means we're done. Right. And no, it doesn't mean we're done. And, um, you know, and, and one thing, like I, I didn't even see, uh, I mean, I, I was made aware that, uh, Jeremy McLaughlin went to the Kings and, you know, and it, it's too bad. I, I think he worked hard, but he knew he wasn't going to get any minutes in, in, on this team. Right. So hats off to him for, for being able to go somewhere else. Yeah, I, you know, I'm glad to see him get more than a minimum contract just because I think he always deserved more than that. Um, for for people that maybe didn't like his size or or whatnot, I mean, he was, if you look at the numbers, was the leader in plus minus um, off the bench and also had the, whenever he was on the floor, we always won his minutes collectively every single year he played with us. So, um, just a silent, a silent, uh, a silent improver of, of, of the team, if you will, um, who right. was just always, always really good. So glad to see him in, in Sacramento, though, get a, a cool opportunity. I wish it wasn't in the West because um, the West just seemingly gets better and better every year. He's not going to be a, he's not going to be a guy that changes the landscape of the of, of the West though. So no, I, I don't think he's a guy that's going to go, Oh God, that guy, we, we let him go and he, he killed us for 30. You know what I mean? Like, but if you think about Timberwolves basketball and the amount of role players that cook us every single year, J max seems like a <laughs> one that might drop 15 on you one night with, a you know, 10 assists. Yeah. So uh, well, he'll, and- he'll back up deer and Fox for sure. And and that's another thing. Like if everyone forgets about Jalen Clark, who they drafted out of UCLA last year, and like he's healthy now, and my sources tell me he might make the team just on his defensive prowess uh, alone. Like like McDaniel's, like that's how that's going to be his calling card. And and so he's going to make and our two draft picks. Like they're saying that uh, Dillingham, he's going to make this team this year. I don't think he's going to spend time in Iowa at all. He's going to be your primary backup to, to, uh, to Conley and Shannon might also make this squad as well, you know? Yep. Yep. So there's going to be guys on the outside, but bottom line is we have very, I have you ever been this optimistic about twins baseball or Minnesota Timberwolves basketball for years to fucking come. I mean, it, we, we're living in a special time right now. I want to say ever since we started this podcast, I think this, it, it has been special team after special team. I'm just saying, I mean, literally when can you have thought, when can you have thought of the, of the past couple of years where the wolves and the twins have been in, in contention um, for, for championships at, at that point? I mean, it, it just doesn't happen. It, so. And it's not like a, Oh, we got to shoot this, shoot it real quick. And that's going to be, it's done. 
You're looking at years to come of these teams being very good. Now we just got to do it. We got J.J. McCarty. Let's do it with the Vikings as well, man, because um, you're right. I mean, I, I've never been this optimistic. I wasn't optimistic about the Twins necessarily going into this year, even when they were on TV. And I don't know, man. The future looks bright with both franchises. It's the first year in a couple of years that uh, – I will be watching every summer league game because I'm so excited yeah. to watch Jalen Clark, Leonard Miller, Dillingham, Shannon Jr. Why not? I yep. mean, it, even Dacian Nix, I really like his game too. So, it, I mean, it it's 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 a fun time. So, it it'll be well, cool. Okay, my last question then, because I you know, and it's not you know, you got to stir it up just to get people hot and bothered. But I saw the. Uh, the towns to the New York Knicks rumor is starting to circulate again. Every and, year. You know, well, when I, I talked to another good friend, I hadn't talked to him in a while about Timberwolves basketball. And he's like, you know, we don't know what's going on with the ownership and we don't, but whoever is writing the checks right now has made a commitment at least to what we're doing to moving forward. And so, that's the only thing that caused me pause because right now I'm like, not, it, it appears we're going to, we're going to keep this. If Conley's really running the show, we're going to keep this, this core together. However, when he brought that up about ownership and I was like, yeah. And then you see the rumors about towns that the Knicks are really, really interested in him. That fucks everything up. If to me, if, if, if you trade him, right. I don't think Conley is that, stupid to to do that right now because look what you're getting back from from new york would be a package of of julius randall uh, another filler salary and a, and they could probably throw us a bunch of picks which is great but quite honestly fuck julius randall i want car anthony Towns. exactly and you're gonna you're gonna get him to learn the whole trade of playing with you know with rudy like we're towns now has had a full year of playing with them, which means I think he will be better. They will be even better next year, you know, because he had what 20 some games two years ago, didn't pan out to anything. I think you would be a fool to break this team up right now. I really do. Absolutely. You run it back another year, you know, if, if things go south in the playoffs, because this team's going to make the playoffs next year. They are. I'm, I'll, I will call yep. it now. They are making the playoffs. Yep. Um, and if things go south and, and it just, you know what, it, it fails again, then maybe you look at, at some different options, and I'm sure they will, whether it be Towns, Gobert, whoever. I've heard Rudy Gobert extension rumors in, in, in my Twitter sphere. Really? So that, that would be interesting. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but it – this year absolutely needs to be a run it back because in, in my opinion, this team, they lacked maybe another defensive guard, but at the same time, I, I just think they got gassed. Um, right. by, by the I agree. I, I agree. I think this team could have, could have won the championship this year if they were just, it, it, it was all new to these guys. I mean, just, yeah. just give them another year. And I think they, I think they'll be even closer. Right. Okay. Anything else, uh, T Wolves style there? Um, a Minnesota fan, I it, think it, it is. is. It is super exciting. No, that that's all I got for Timberwolves. Okay, um, going to finish up with this because you know, and I I think we we talked a little bit about, um, and I I guess I don't, I'm I'm not going to dwell on it, but you know, we talked a little soccer uh, before before you know in the beginning. Have you been watching any at all? Uh, you know, the the Copa America Cup was terrible if you were i guess if you were an american fan um actually the games were were fairly entertaining the euro cup has been really really fun to watch but you keep your eye on that at all or not really but not necessarily i hear a lot about it um from a co-worker of mine who is just super invested in in the soccer he's he yep. leads uh the the cauldron for for casey sporting which is really cool yeah you um, talking about him. yep 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 but uh yeah, he. So you know, I hear a little bit, a little bit about it. Um, but no, I have not been watching games or anything. Okay, so I found it funny over, over the fourth. Uh, I was hanging with an old buddy, and we went to his boss's uh, uh, Fourth of July party. And 
um, towards the end of the night. And then, you know, his boss and his wife are very big sports fans, but I'm guessing maybe not soccer fans. Like it was on in the background. Um, and his boss and wife said, Oh, does anyone even watch soccer? And I was like, and I was going to say something, but it just so happened that this party was a very uh, pro Donald Trump party. So I knew that any kind of bringing in anything new or like any arguments would fall on deaf ears or whatever. So I, I didn't even bother. Um, but I, I have enjoyed because I'm not working during the summer, there's good stuff on at one o'clock in the afternoon, you know, and, and, and there was, there was some, some pretty good football that was, that was played. Um, but one thing that I was, was very confused by, um, Austria played Turkey uh, to get to, uh, I believe, the, the quarterfinal round. It was a round of 16. Very, very entertaining game. I was like, if if anybody says anything negative about soccer, says you can't watch, it's not exciting, they would have to watch that game. because. Of it. Anyways, it's not my point. My point is, since when the fuck is Turkey now turkey yay? Okay? Like, for a hundred years, we've known this country as Turkey and now it is Turkey. A, and that's how you're supposed to pronounce it. Um, I didn't understand that at all. And, you know, like, like to my point, like, so I have a friend, Frederick from Turkey. He's originally from Turkey. And he came in and like, did you see that game against Austria? It was crazy, man. And yeah. And Turkey, a one, two, one. And I was like, wait a minute, Turkey. A he's like, yeah, that's how you pronounce it. And I'm like, now, wait a minute. Do you now pronounce your name Frederick? And he's like, no, it, no, it's Frederick. And I'm like, why is it not Frederick from Turkey? And he said, well, it just isn't. Now, my point is, is the whole world, like the whole world now is gone. Like we got to do something different. We got to, is, is it a case of being woke or what? Like, I just don't understand. Like they made me stop eating chicken Kiev. You know what? I'm ch eating chicken Kiev now. No, it's chicken Kiev. It always has been. I'm not going to have stuffing and turkey A at Thanksgiving. What's next, Noah? Are we going to have, hey, where are you from? Oh, I'm from uh, Montreal. Where is that? Canada A? Like, <laughs> what? I, I don't get it. I don't get the world we live in. So I just looked it up, and it says Turkish people have called their country Tur turkey A for many years, and their government would like the rest of the world to catch up. Yeah, Apparently, they issued a formal deal in 2023 saying, please do it. Yeah, Ford Minister Kof something said in a tweet that the move would increase our country's brand value. Is this a marketing scheme? You would think. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, none of my students know geography, but it's the one question I can always say, like, if it's a – Okay, and they changed the name from Constantinople. Now it's Istanbul. You know a country I'm talking about. Gobble, gobble. Well, now I can't do that anymore in the classroom. You know, like that's the only question they could get right. Oh, it's Turkey. No, no, Turkey A now. Sorry. So bad. <laughs> Inter yeah, interesting. I guess there's other countries that have done the same, three, same thing. Sri Lanka. Um Wait, what well, is Sri Lanka known as? Well, I guess it was just Lanka at one point. I did not know that. In um, 72, and then they added the the Sri, which I'm sure everyone used to pronounce Sri, but it's Sri Lanka. Yeah, right, so. Sri Lanka, right. All right, well, I I was just w wondering if you're aware, you know, because the last the last point I want to make, because I, I do wonder what your opinion is about this. Like, I bring up things like this, and usually your response is, and I would imagine your generation's response is, well, it really doesn't affect me at all. Like it really, I really don't care. And, and that's the deal, right? Like, and that's why I think this show should be great is because you got an angry man shaking his fist at the clouds and saying it never was like this. And on the other side, you're like, ah, it really doesn't change my life one bit. So why are we talking about it? You know, like, hey. <laughs> there are topics where it doesn't change my life, but I have opinions on it. But um, no, it's, I don't know. It, <laughs> it, I, I like it. I like it. You should, uh, this should be a daily thing or, or a, a, and every, every show you got something that, that pisses you off. And I'm curious if it would piss me off too. What's great. What grinds my gears. I, yes, I, I, I will maybe make a point of that for, 
for a long period of time. I, I just like to argue. So, you know, it doesn't, doesn't matter to me uh, one way or another. Um, all right. Well, I will say this came away from uh, the 4th of July party uh, and I didn't want to kill anybody or, you know, like uh, go crazy. So I, you know, I, I don't want to say anything, you know, nutsoid, you know, that political or anything like that. But I came away from that Trump party not wanting to, you know, do violence to anybody. So I had a pretty good time. Uh, fourth of July. How, how was your fourth, sir? It was, it was very good. Um, did a lot of working, but you know, we had a very, very fun, uh, fourth of July where I work, um, made a lot of cool memories with some people, which was really cool. Um, you know, you mentioned, uh, I, I got to bring this up cause we never, we never talked about, it. I know we're, we're over, but I, I think this is something to talk about. Um, got to throw out some, uh, condolences, of a, a, a Viking passed away. Not oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Terrible. Kyrie Terrible. Jackson, who we were, uh, or, uh, we were very excited about, um, when he was drafted, uh, and to hear how it happened is, is, is horrible. It seems to, to happen quite a bit now to, to the Vikings. It feels like the past couple of years. So, um, so for those that don't know what you're talking about, tell tell us what you're what you're talking about. Fourth round draft pick by the name of well, Kyrie Jackson. Kyrie Jackson, um, and uh, he was driving in a car with a couple of friends and uh, this high school woman, friends, like those guys. That was his ride or die. Sorry, they that they played football together, and it was yeah. So I think it was in Virginia or or one of the eastern Tennessee, one of the eastern states, and. Driving down, I there was some woman driving drunk, and yep. I don't know how they hit him or whatever, but he unfortunately passed away on the scene, I believe. Um, which is well, his buddies did too, right? Like one of the other ones did too, and, and so, she walked away, right? She walked away from it, no problem. Well, and you know, I gotta say, it, it, it's people looked up her her social media profiles because the name was released and everything, and. She's got a lot of tweets basically bragging about driving drunk. And I got to say that that's got to, that's got to put you in prison for much longer. Cause that you're just a shitty motherfucker. Like that's. I agree. It's fucking and, terrible. Well, no, because ask, ask the fucker that killed Malik Seeley, how many DWIs he has since he killed Malik Seeley. Right. All right. And like, I agree with you. Thank you. I, I had forgotten about um, Mr. Jackson and yeah, I, our hearts and go out to, to his family and like it's such a sad deal because that guy was like stocking shelves at a grocery store. Right. Or he was, he was a he, six flags custodian at one point. Yep. yep. And, and thought that football was done. And by the grace of God, he got there. And I know he was very excited about coming, coming here and playing professional football. It's just a terrible story, man. Um, so we do, we do uh, give props to, to him, man. They got to do a patch or something on the on the jersey. I would assume they would. I would hope so. I would yeah. hope so. Uh, all right. Well, thanks. It's good to be back. Uh, thank you, fans, for watching. For Noah Storzinger, I'm Johnny Voss. We will see you next time.